Hi all. In this video, we are going to see about the different pupillary reflexes. So, this question has been asked as a diagram question, has been asked as a physiological basis question. So, we will see more about this. So, by pupillary reflexes, we have got basically two types of pupillary reflexes. One is the light reflex, which consists of the direct light reflex as well as the indirect or consensual light reflex. Another pupillary reflex is our accommodation reflex or near response. So, now we will see about each one by one. What is light reflex? See, when light is focused on one eye, the pupils of both eyes constrict. Okay. So, based on which eye constricts, we can divide into two. Direct light reflex means it is the constriction of the pupil of that eye onto which the light was shown. So, you show a light onto one eye and the pupil of that eye would constrict. That is direct light reflex. What is consensual light reflex? See, when you show the light onto one eye, the pupil of the other eye would constrict. That is meant by consensual or indirect light reflex. The latent period of this is around 0.2 to 0.5 seconds. So, now we are going to see about the pathway by which this works. Why should the pupils constrict when light is shown on one eye? And why should the pupil of the other eye constrict when light is shown on one eye? So, we will see the pathway now. So, suppose this are the outline of the two eyes and light is shown onto one eye. So, we know that we know the basic visual pathway in which we've got the fibers passing through the optic nerve, optic chiasm, optic tract and all right. So, here when light is shown the optic nerve it uh, arises from that it, it passes on that impulses and it reaches the optic chiasm and from there it goes to the optic tract and from the optic tract in fact we, it reaches the lateral geniculate body or lateral geniculate nucleus. From the lateral geniculate nucleus, we've got fibers moving on to another important nucleus called the pretectal nucleus. It's called the pretectal nucleus. From the pretectal nucleus, this information passes on to the Edinger Westphal nucleus. Edinger Westphal nucleus is a uh, nucleus of the oculomotor nerve. It is a um, special nucleus of the oculomotor nerve. So, from the pretectal nucleus, this information is passed on to the Edinger Westphal nucleus. So, from the Edinger Westphal nucleus via the oculomotor nerve, it reaches the ciliary ganglion, and from there, the postganglionic fibers reaches the pupillary constrictor muscle of the iris. So, that is how we have constriction of the pupil. So, see, this is the light reflex pathway. That means direct light reflex is because when light falls, it is transmitted on the optic nerve, uh, it reaches the pretectal nucleus, and via this Edinger Westphal nucleus, the short ciliary nerve, there is constriction of pupil of this eye. Okay? But since there is information going on to the other Edinger Westphal nucleus also, there is constriction of pupil on this side also. Okay? So, that is, how, that is how we have the direct light reflex as well as the consensual or the indirect light reflex. So, the receptors for this pathway are the rods and cones. The afferent pathway is the optic nerve, optic chiasm and optic tract. The center is the pretectal nucleus of the midbrain. The efferent pathway is by the Edinger Westphal nucleus, oculomotor nerve, ciliary ganglion and short ciliary nerve and the effector organ is the constriction of the pupil. The response obtained is constriction of pupil. So, this is the pathway for light reflex. Now, we will quickly see about the accommodation reflex. What is accommodation reflex? We know that when you when we change our focus from a far object to a near object, suddenly there would be some changes in our eyes. What are they? There would be pupillary constriction, there would be lens thickening as well as convergence of the eyeballs. So, these three changes that is pupillary constriction, increased curvature of the lens, as well as convergence of the eyeballs. These are called the three C's of accommodation reflex. So, now we are going to see how this occurs. So, now we will see the pathway by which this accommodation reflex occurs. So, suppose this is the outline showing the optic nerve, optic chiasm and optic tract and all. So, see here when, when this person is asked to a focus to a near object after focusing a far object what happens is these impulse pass through the optic nerve optic chiasm and the optic tract 
and as usual reaches the lateral geniculate nucleus. Now from there we know from the lateral geniculate nucleus we usually have that optic radiation. So here also we have the optic radiation that is reaching the primary visual cortex or area V1 of the visual cortex. Now from there these impulses are transmitted on to another area called the frontal eye field area. And from the frontal eye field area the information passes to the oculomotor nerve nucleus that is not only Edinger Westphal but also the somatic motor nucleus. It reaches both this um, oculomotor nucleus that is somatic motor nucleus as well as the Edinger Westphal nucleus. So from there just like our usual light reflex via the oculomotor nerve it reaches the ciliary ganglion which in turn via the short ciliary nerve will cause constriction of the pupil. Not only that because the somatic motor nucleus is involved, it also sends impulse to the medial rectus of the eyeballs and that is why we have convergence of the eyeball. So see, this can explain all the three effects that we have when we have a near response or accommodation reflex. Because the Edinger Westphal nucleus is involved, we have constriction of the pupil and not only that, it will cause this uh, increased curvature of lens also. And because this other nucleus is involved, because the somatic motor nucleus is involved, it reaches the, it will send the impulse to the medial rectus also, so that there would be convergence of the eyeball. Remember here for recommendation reflex, the pretectal nucleus is not involved. This is the major difference between light reflex and accommodation reflex. So thus, this is the pathway for accommodation reflex. So here we have seen that from the rods and cons via the visual pathway, we, uh, the information reaches the visual cortex. From there, it reaches the frontal eye field. And from the frontal eye field, it reaches the nucleus of the oculomotor nerve, both the somatic motor as well as the Edinger Westphal nucleus. And that reaches the iris, ciliary muscle, as well as the ocular, extraocular muscle, that is the medial rectus. So because it reaches the pupillary constrictors, there will be constriction of the pupil. Because uh, it acts on the ciliary muscle, there will be relaxation of the lens. That means the lens curvature would increase. And finally, there will be convergence of the eyeball. So that the accommodation reflex, the three C's of accommodation reflex can be made. Now, an important applied aspect related to this light and accommodation reflex is the Argel Robertson pupil. So what is meant by this Argel Robertson pupil? In this case, when the patient or when the subject is shown a torch onto one eye, the pupils will not constrict. That means the light reflex is not there. But when the patient is asked to focus on to a near object, then pupillary constriction would be there, which means accommodation reflex is present. So for this patients who have this Argel Robertson pupil, for them accommodation reflex will be present, but the light reflex would be absent. In fact, you can remember this by the mnemonic ARP itself accommodation reflex present. So what, why, why, why does it happen? Why do we have an accommodation reflex and not have a light reflex? Well, that is because usually this Argel Robertson pupil is produced by a damage to the pretectal region, which is common in neurosyphilis. And remember, the pretectal nucleus is only involved in the light reflex. So when your pretectal nucleus is involved, your light reflex might be abolished. But the accommodation reflex would be intact because the pretectal nucleus is not involved in the accommodation reflex. So here the characteristics are, we will have loss of light reflex, both direct and consensual. The accommodation reflex would be present. And the reason is that the light reflex and accommodation reflex have different neural pathways. One of which involves the pretectal nucleus and other which do not. So that is the physiological basis for Argel Robertson pupil. So I hope this concept was clear for you. Thank you.